Templar uh, during the break, and he and I, we were both like, do you remember any other games where a team came from back from three inhibitors? And the only one he, we could think of <laughs> was the game he lost that I was referencing yeah. <laughs> in the semifinals of Champions Winter over two years ago. Yes. Where Blaze came back against Frost yeah. and took that game. Not only three inhibitors, but both the Nexus turrets, too. Like, yeah. Uh, Frost. Oh, or, uh, Frost ended up going to the finals that season, actually beating Blaze in the end, but that was the one game. It was a crazy game for sure. And so was that last one. So here we are in game number three between Longju IM and KT Roaster. And there's a Vayne ban now, since Roar has played it in the first two games of this set. Is it going to be an Eve ban from IM that has been their mode throughout this series so far and LeBlanc <laughs> probably smart. <laughs> Alright, yeah, they don't want to prioritize that as a first pick and they definitely saw what Nalina could do in any situation with that LeBlanc. Now what do you ban out here? Do you... There's the Callista. Uh, but if you ban out the Callista, they're probably just gonna... Oh, they're... so you're... Yeah, you're gonna say... Alright, you take your choice and we'll take the other one. Yeah, they'll grab the Gragas immediately, but now that Evelyn is available for score if he wants it, he did before coming in tonight, played in three of his last five games. They can take Callista and Alistair here again. That was their draft on the uh, on the red side in game one, a game that they lost. Yes, of course, I am shutting that down with the Varus vein combo. Now, Vayne has been shut down and so has that Thresh. So Ignar not gonna have that Thresh nor the Alistair. So is he gonna revert to the Janna? Remember that KT fell behind early in that game off of a failed dive and a lane swap. So if they can amend the early game mistakes, they can come out with a lot more power. Uh, whether this is going to be, yeah, the, the rumble again for Apple. He generally has been performing, fell apart kind of in the late game there with some questionable ultimates, but for the most part has been doing pretty well in the series individually. Ignar going for the Janna Disengage. They're not going to have a Gragas Vayne combo like they had in game one. Still could see the Varus again, though. I mean, you can just see how much more awake KT is after that one. <laughs> Could see Varus Corky here. Okay. Yeah, and possibly the Lee Sin over that Evelyn here for score. Really trying to snowball the Callista Alistair lane, probably. Yeah, I mean, you can make a lot happen. Alistair doesn't need that phase call to make something happen with his own combo and flash, of course. Nagni reverting to his Cassiopeia. Generally, just a really solid mid lane choice if you have to pick blind. I mean, sure, you can be countered with a lot of mobility or hard CC, but, well, it's going to be the Rek'Sai, meanwhile. You can still pressure a lot of that early ganks uh, with the Rek'Sai. Yeah, and more relevant in the late game, too. So, I like this. Roar, thinking about that Tristana, an OQ pick recently, showing how strong Tristana is in terms of sieging and pushing towers. Was buffed on 5.9, so that explosive shot doing even more damage on the stacks. Yeah. So you can really go through towers quickly. That's Tristana's main strength is in the siege these days. Yeah, we had some questions about exactly how much that mattered, but in that game, OQ showed us that it can make a big difference. Of course, Oki also stole three objectives that game with auto attack, so that, <laughs> that changed the flow quite outlier. a bit. Outlier. Yeah, a little bit of an outlier. <laughs> but Azir being highlighted for Frozen. So the classic Azir Cassiopeia matchup in mid, possibly. All right, well, you've got the mid game with the Rumble and the mid to kind of the mid to late game with Azir. Of course, Azir also just really strong in the late game and just it to round it out. But. Not much of a front line here for IM. Still, uh, Grog is strong with Tristana for the same reason, strong with Bane. Yeah. Single target champion, you can reset off of that to clean up a fight very effectively. And you've got good zone afterwards. You can push the rest of the team out and focus someone out down behind the Emperor's Divide and then move forward. So I like this composition from Incredible Miracle. It makes, I think, more sense than their last couple. <laughs> well, KT, if you go for possibly the Hecarim here, if you really want to just stick on to... Oh, no, it's been banned. Maokai, obviously, has that sticking power and can just dive right into the back line. Of course, Janna is there, but if you twist it advance in, it's not going to matter too much. 
And in his double AP, somehow Kai also has that going for him. He'll naturally build some defense into that. Okay, so much more standard comps <laughs> this game as KT and I am retooling their lineups just a little bit. No more Rengar, no more top lane Fizz. Yeah, well, a little bit of a reversal here. I am this time not necessarily always looking for the fair five on five fight, or even if it starts five on five with that explosive cast equalizer, trying to divide and the Empress divide, of course, trying to isolate some members of KT. Well, this Jana Tristana should be very efficient at pushing down towers with the Eye of the Storm as well. And that means that, honestly, a lane swap will be pretty attractive to Incredible Miracle here, not only to dodge out the Callista, but to just get some turret gold early on if they want to play a more fast push, up-tempo style. And the scary thing, too, is that Azir and Tristana as a combination, if you get one of the outers down and you just put up a, an Azir turret behind you, Tristana <laughs> is going to take down that next turret, right? If you're, if you're, yeah. so I like this from IM. All right, well, IM has been looking a lot better today than they have in the earlier weeks of the season, just like they did in the qualifiers, looking to show some promise. Can they lock in the win, though, against KT Roaster? Such a big question for these guys, such a big test for them. And KT Roaster, can they continue to say that they are in the top four, top five teams? Let's find out as we jump into game number three between LZIM and KT Roaster. Our IM fan's voice is now gone. I mean, <laughs> my voice is pretty much gone. Yeah, that Shabra. last game. <laughs> you know, LZIM continuing to be the gatekeepers, keeping me from leaving the studio. <laughs> you can well, never take the character out of a team. You've had an interesting final day of champions. That's <laughs> it's for been sure. fun. It's definitely been fun for various reasons and so far just uh lane swap coming in possibly from kt somebody just gonna march forward arrow is up here and you see fixer coming over to the top lane while arrow goes back nope arrow just gonna cancel that recall all right they're gonna see Callista in the top side on yes. this ward and therefore will we see this tristana Nope, Tristana's going up. They want it. Oh, okay, they want to face it. Um, another could probably be also that Apple super vulnerable to ganks then with the Alistair and the Rek'Sai coming in. So all things considered, maybe just saying, hey, we can, we can just do fine in the duo lane. To manage that. I, I, I'm just curious how this lane's going to work out right here. Uh, one thing, of course, when you have Tristana, she pushes the lane very well, mm -hmm. which means that Callista, very poor wave clear, so they may just be hoping to shove them in constantly and then not actually face much of a threat as Arrow is just sitting under his turret without a lot of freedom to move forward without taking a bunch of minion damage. Very true. So Arrow kicking things off, just trying to get some early CS to avoid All right, so mattering too much. Deep Ward goes in uh, right here from Fixer. Fixer walking into the enemy jungle, so does lose some control over this lane, but they have the eyes onto blue buff. They're going to know exactly where that start is. Yeah, Both junglers starting on the bottom side of the map. Wow, look at that harass coming in against Arrow. Now, Fixer did start with his heal, though, because of this exact reason. And so he'll be able to keep Arrow in lane. But how much can Arrow get out of staying in that lane is really the big question here, like you mentioned earlier. It is all pushed up. How much can he get from this? Can he get every single one? Because then he'll catch up just fine. And Fix are going to be able to help with that too. Yeah, I think the, the logic behind the Tristana here is that the explosive charge, once it goes down, because both champions are basically trying to stack autos on each other, Callista with Rend and the Tristana with the explosive charge, True. that the Janna shield actually will result in a more favorable trade for Tristana in this lane. Uh, yeah, especially early on, while this Alistair is still working up to level three, where he actually has all of his abilities and can get his combo down, that Tristana should have an early advantage for that reason. 
of frozen. Meanwhile, getting some nice harass down onto Dogne. Both of them still have biscuits in hand, though. Dogne is going to try to stick around and shove it in. Of course, Azir has a little trouble clearing at the tower early on without too much attack speed. Yeah, so with Tristana, you get pressure advantage and uh, the, at least early the trading advantage. Still have to be quite cautious. That Rek'Sai comes through. Yeah, and Fixer, of course, over time can heal Arrow back, but if you get the shield on him the right time, you also get extra damage. So, OZIM, they've been looking for some of those opportunities, but not going to gamble everything on getting the extra damage there. So, yeah, you see the shield coming in again. And, of course, with the E for the explosive shot, I mean, once you put that on there, it's a guaranteed first damage, no matter how little or how much. So, that also is the advantage for Tristana, whereas the Ren, you kind of need to time it at the very end to keep that distance. Tucson getting the Scuttle Crab and trying to help out the bottom lane. It is pretty even so far. I like that we're seeing more and more counterplay to Callista after she took over the meta for a while. People are trying, starting to figure out some lane matchups that are pretty effective against her, whether that's going to be the Nami and Ferris that we saw Samsung try, or the Brob Urgot that we've seen KT try, or now this. Yeah. See how it works out. Meanwhile, Tucson getting that Scuttle Crab and walking through the river allows Apple to know that he can play a little bit more aggressive in that bottom lane. We saw Nogne trying to force uh -oh. a really good trade. Uh-oh, Ignar, just, yeah, he's just going to flash out. It is a very important summoner blown, though, as Fixer can now flash in for an initiate onto Janna. Yeah, that Janna going to be very squishy early as well. So has the exhaust to cut some of the damage, but the kill pressure in that lane just went up by a significant amount. Tucson's going to respond to it. By yep. trying a lane gank here, where Score backing off to his Raptor buff. All right, well, with Score gone, KT also not going to try to all in with Fixer, as War will still do a respectable amount of damage. And Tucson really also just waiting for the counter gank here. And, uh oh, Score is walking back up. He he sees that they keep pushing up. He's going to get the cards. We'll see if he continues on as Tucson actually leaves the lane now. They decide Score did leave for the time being, which is true. Well, that's the danger of a Tristana lane, though, is that you don't have very much control over the wave. Yeah, it's always kind of been her big weakness, and it really goes against her, because her early phase is her very weakest phase. But well, except it, for like level one and two. But In this particular game, however, because the junglers are going to have to play around Tristana's pushing power, that's going to open up Apple a little bit to not feel quite so threatened in the bottom side. Yeah. In a matchup where there's a lot of kill pressure, Maokai, Rek'Sai, locking him down. And again, I mean, earlier, I really like Tucson's movements, trying to focus earlier on the bottom side of the map, allowing Apple to play freely for the time being knowing that Ignar and Roar had a bit of an easier time in the lane in the early phases, and now we'll see Tucson's movements here on out will matter quite a bit. Fixer just using the headbutt to allow Arrow to farm freely as the wave tries to push up against the turret. Yeah, they just don't want to lose too much CS into the tower right now. Roar just putting down her E onto Arrow's list every, every chance she gets. I mean, it's just a guaranteed burst. Also target. forces Callista to back off yeah. then, because you know that you walk up for that trade, especially like we were talking about with the Eye of the Storm, it's probably not going to do you too many favors. Interesting matchup. I'm curious to see what Roar is going to itemize here. Well, Nagane going for the blue buff. Now they're going to see him come back over to the mid lane. Tucson showing up. He's trying to steal the blue. It's not going to happen. He sees Nagane take it. Nagane. Maybe getting some poke down, but not going to chase through. And that'll be that in the mid lane. Still pretty quiet. And I mean, both sides, they... Oh, hello, Score. Gonna run right into Tucson. Now, Score is level 6, but that's a lot of burst. And there's the Equalizer coming in from Apple. But there is a tunnel all prepared for Score. Yeah, Score nearly getting caught out right there. Saw him on the Tremor Sense, but because this Rumble's been so safe, it's a pretty big pressure composition from Incredible Miracle, where they are able to really push forward in these lanes, and especially in mid and top, threaten that tower 
to be killed at any time. Yeah, meanwhile, Roar gets caught with an all-in from Fixer. He's gonna have to jump out. Arrow also took a lot of damage. Oh, but look at this! A solo kill, and Frozen's at full health in the mid lane. Wow, Nagne didn't even use his flash, didn't use his ultimate there either, so not sure. Frozen looks pretty <laughs> pleased nice with it. Ran on his face, it must have been a really sweet surprise. Right there, I'm assuming because Frozen hit level six later, because Nagne is level seven right now. I don't think Nagne was aware of exact when exactly he was going to hit that six, but maybe we'll get a replay. Things are a little dicey in the top lane, though. We'll have to wait for this to also allow Tucson to take the blue buff because he just got Nagne just got one and Frozen. Oh, Frozen's, oh, Frozen's level seven actually. I guess he turned level eight. I saw that wrong. The monitor. Oh, just a nice fall through the damage from. Him. He was about to use his ultimate, but the Emperor's Divide bounced back doing enough CC, and Nagani just not respecting that burst at that point after he got poked down earlier. Yeah, pretty clearly, and his positioning a little bit suspect there, too. He didn't think that Frozen would be willing to all-in him with yeah. that Sand Soldier that had taken out a position behind him, but Frozen not even having to flash for that Emperor Divide, just barely getting on the other side of Nagne. Yep, so Frozen has his cleanse for the Petrifying Gaze, has his flash, too, and that's a really big advantage for Frozen. Well, in spite of the first blood here, uh, there's a big CS lead in the bottom lane, which is helping them yeah. keep even in terms of gold, even though Frozen has that CS edge as well. So Nagne having a bit of a hard time early. This is such a skill matchup. Yeah, I mean, we see it so often, and it's gone both ways several times. Now the lane swap coming back in as both teams are a little aware of the dragon. And like you said, I mean, Apple's been able to push up, but he hasn't actually been getting those last hits very accurately, especially with the Harpoon, missing out on quite a bit, now leading to a 20 CS difference. He does have his Haunting Guys, though. So that is there for him, of course. Just kind of when you get the items is what really matters for the early phases for Rumble, and then you can just catch up later on by clearing ways with Equalizer when needed. Vision Wars around the Dragon Pit. And Tucson now also hanging out around the Dragon Pit, making sure to keep eyes there for his teammates and also on the Dragon. Now, no wards directly in front of the pit. Just the brushes near the mid lane for LZIM. And we look it looks like just going to be an Infinity Edge and Shiv build from Roar, one would presume at this point. I was curious if he was going to go Bloodthirst or how much they wanted to commit to a possible fast push. I see. Fixer getting slowed by the Zephyr, and they really want to take this pink ward out. Tucson not able to just yet, but it only wow. has one hit left. Wow, they're really committing to this. Fixer does take an explosive shot, so he has to back out. He doesn't want to take too much poke beforehand, and eventually LZIM does get a new ward down in the brush. Yeah, Na Nagne was pushed in, so he couldn't respond. That's why they had to give it up, because Frozen was in the brush in the river, mm -hmm. threatening to come down and turn that into a 4v3. Well, well done by Ozia. I'm really trying to play safe. So, score now showing up in the bottom lane for a lane gang. Fixer has his flash. Roar needs to watch out. Meanwhile, in top lane, we're going to see a 1v1 duel. And it looks like bottom, they're going to go in. And the flash pulverize onto Ignar. Ignar doesn't really have an answer. Oh, he flashes out. And there is the monsoon. Fates Call comes in, though. And look at this someday coming in from the backside as Roar has to jump forward to help get a kill onto score. There's the reset. There's the explosive cast. And I think Roar should be able to jump out. But a triple knockback coming in from KT and Frozen is there so KT has to back out once again Nagne once again not able to leave the lane first and just a fast TP coming in from Apple with the instant equalizer to help take out Arrow and score they used a lot to be able wow. to kill Ignar Ignar blowing him back with a nice monsoon forcing Fixer to re-engage with the Fates call and that'll be first dragon as well yeah. Two incredible miracle. KT was so desperate for that kill because they were so close to bursting her down, but Ignar with a really good play to extend that fight. Roar was doing free damage by that point. And like you mentioned, Apple shows up to really change the pace of that one. Yeah, it's instant equalizer too. Great placement. And the fact that he could TP in within a uh, range of his flame spitter too was a nice added bonus. Well, Nagne trying to bait this fight. Emperor's Divide backwards trying to bring Nagne in. Frozen not going to get that hit, but he decides he just wants to back out anyway as score shows up. He didn't quite hit the Divide as well as he might have liked in that one. That forces a flash. And he's going to have to back out of there. 
Of course, even if the Empress Vi had hit, I think Nagi would have just continued to chase him, really. A score showed up. That could have been more dangerous for Frozen. But either way, that's a flash down for Frozen and only the ghost down for Nagi. So Nagi still has a chance to outplay Frozen here in the mid lane. And the big problem is still that CS differential in the top. That's what is keeping this game so even right now, is that Someday has really been farming a lot better than Apple. Yeah, three to one in kill score, but only about four or five hundred gold difference in favor of Longju. Okay. Still no Bloodthirster, however, for Arrow. He couldn't quite get it on his last back, and that means he has a lot fewer options in this laning phase for being aggressive. Yeah, and so we do have Roar also pretty much right on time to finish his Infinity Edge soon enough. And still shoving up that bottom lane. Not as many wards as they might want for Longju here in the river, but they have timings on the buffs. They know where the mid lane is, so they're going to back out. And so now they'll try to get some vision, or at least try to bait something out. I'm thinking about wards, it seems, for their teammates. Same thing from KOG, noting that there's a pink ward in that tri brush. Well, there's still a limited window here, I think, for IM to take advantage of the situation because with an all with a 50 CS deficit in the top lane, that Valkai is going to be unkillable sooner rather than later. It's based on that differential, so they have to use Rumble's natural power. Yeah. in the mid game to take an edge or else that is definitely going to come back to haunt them. A lot of magic resist also coming in. Cowell already on the someday. Nagne going with the Abyssal Scepter. We also have that shield from Arrow. So that burst from Rumble is going to be falling off pretty quick unless he has some items to back it up. All right. Now Roar. Didn't get the kills in that first one. Fates call all the way back for the KT duo as Tucson shows up for a gank. Quick, grab that cow, wrangle him, <laughs> wrangle him out of danger. Whatever keeps him safe. But Tucson's not done just yet, so Nogne looking to deviate from the mid lane. And they see him leave, and he sees them in the river. So he just needs to clear out a tunnel away from Rek'Sai and force Nagani to go all the way back around into lane. Rek'Sai on the top side of the map. Oh, Roar is putting down some damage onto Fixer. Yeah, he's starting to hurt. Getting a few crits in. And Score really wants this play. Frozen. Frozen doesn't have Flash. Does have the Cleanse though. So he could swiftly get out with the Sand Soldiers even if he gets stunned from the Gaze, but Nagane should be able to burst him down pretty quickly. Apple still a 50 CS difference in top, and I think you're right, Monty. That's mattering a lot right now. Someday, because Roar didn't get the kills earlier. Oh, Frozen goes in and actually forces the flash out of Nagane as Tucson shows up in mid, and that forces both members of KT to walk all the way around, and LZIM, Longju's just gonna take this tier one in mid. Yeah, that's exactly what they need to do with this Trisana and Diaz here. Just go for the tower kills. And this is <laughs> the scary part. How do you deal with this? Pressure on the map. Trisana pushing in. Trisana may kill that turret right now, actually. Yeah, Tucson just gonna put some poke down to Fixer and keep him at half health. Oh, nice howling Gale as Fixer tries to come in and set something up for score and arrow. Still no one in the bottom lane, so yep, Roar just takes the tier one and bottom. He's gonna have to go home, come back into the mid lane. Very scary fast push composition yeah, from IM, and that's, that is now really starting to tip the scales in their favor. I like it. I think it's a cool comp. We haven't seen much Tristana, but when paired with the Azir, and you could just put that Tristana right in the middle and constantly have the Azir turret to fall back to while you get a few auto attacks here, a few auto attacks there with the explosive charge. And wow, that is going to be really difficult for KT to handle. Yeah, so they pass over the first turret coming out from Azir for now. We'll see when that passive comes back up. What's up for Longju? Now 40 seconds left on Dragon and because of the push from KT, Roar shows up bottom side again. And they also need to fight back for some vision here on the bottom half. Whoa, that is a fast cow. Frozen about. Yeah, Frozen already nearing his death cap also. So someday hasn't bought in a while. Yep. Apple has that 
home guards, but that's about it. Apple doing some decent damage. He's stayed, he's managed to at least stay at the whole 50 CS differential compared to some days, so that's, I guess, relatively good news for Longju. Well, it helps that he got that global gold now from two towers also, so he's not going to yeah. be too far behind any longer when we consider his kill and assist. Well, here's a way to guarantee vision around the Dragon Pit. Just push up, ward up the deep jungle, and force Arrow to use his summoners. And while Roar just flashing forward, there's a summoner to heal. He needs one more hit. If he had gotten one more hit, that would have been a kill. Very hungry for that one. Both summoners used by Roar, using that summoner to heal for the movement speed aggressively, because at the very least, you'll get this tier two and possibly the Dragon. Now KT looking to possibly respond with the tier one in mid. But everyone from Longju is coming towards the mid lane. Now, will they just go straight to Dragon and give up this tier one? It is warded. Actually, everything's warded, so KT just gonna have to back off. Yeah, you could save that mirror, that tier one. Now that Trisana's starting the Dragon already, Arrow trying to make a play. Someday, they they have the wards there, Roar a little bit low from this Dragon. Yeah, the Fates Call is ready to come in, and Tucson needs to secure that. All right, they secure the Dragon, they just need to get out of here. Ignar looking for a perfect monster to save his teammates. There's Ali Gale, Ignar will go down, scores on top of Roar, and look at this flank coming in from someday. Empress Divide though on the 2v1, there's the Equalizer to divide up the entire team of KT. But Apple and Frozen are caught behind as Roar has already gone down in the earlier phase of the fight. Frozen left all alone, KT is gonna clean up. A lot used early in that fight by Incredible Miracle just to zone them out, but Someday finds the flank on that Maokai, and when the Equalizer's down, KT just very scrappy. They've got a lot of sustained damage from this Callista and from the Cassiopeia, and their chase potential pretty huge as well. Take yeah. a look at that again. So Cassiopeia comes in from the side. Roar is just so low at the start of this fight, too. And remember, he doesn't have much in order to sustain himself. Ignar dies ne nearly instantly. And there's the Emperor's Divide and the Equalizer. But Equalizer really doesn't hit anybody on KT at all. And a lot of flashes forward. Nogne just absolutely free to do damage from the side throughout that entire engagement. Yeah, also Ignar trying to get greedy with the Monsoon at that point. I think partly because Apple came in from the side too for a flank. So considered maybe going for a fight where he could have just monsooned right away, sacrifice himself, and let his teammates run yeah, away. Yeah, Apple being cut off meant that he wasn't doing any damage with Flame Spitter yeah. or any of his other abilities. And then when he also didn't hit a good equalizer, that meant that he did pretty much nothing during that entire fight. So essentially like a 5v4 because he was busy getting hit by Arrow that entire time too. Well, a bit of a rough fight for Longju. They did secure the second dragon, but now we're back to the situation where KT evens up in gold, and they're up in kills. Oh, and they are the ones who have more turrets to take, so see Longju walking up, gonna check it smartly with the barrel first, and wants to clear that pink, but there are three members of KT, two that Longju are absolutely aware of. Tucson trying to get some vision from the Baron Pit too, but it looks like KT says, all right, well, he's cut off. Let's just go for the gank. Nice Howling Gale for Vignard to catch two of the main initiators from KT. Yeah, but it's KT, they just want to stall out the fast push right now. Yeah. I am is very dangerous when left to their own devices on the turrets. Uh, Callista, again, not very good wave clear. Going to have that static shift eventually. All right, Tucson just clearing out the wards. And now, look what's happening in mid lane. Oh, actually, what's happening is that Nogni is going to force the fight. The Empress of Might doesn't hit. And the Poison gets the kill. Frozen spending time to channel his passive on that turret allows Nogni to get one last Poison tick onto him. And Score comes in for the flank. There's a nice equalizer. Explosive cast being used. Kind of gets them off the equalizer, but at the same time does save them from a hard initiate from KT. Yeah, and they keep on pushing forward right now. It's very critical for KT that they stall out the fast push in a way where they can continue to engage. Yeah, Frozen getting caught out in that solo kill matters quite a bit right now as Nogne is able to free push with that blue buff. Somebody now here, Fixer goes a little too deep, but nice fate call, fate's call by Arrow to get him out of danger. They don't really need that ability right now for the initiate. They've had plenty from score and someday. Is there ever too deep when you're playing Callista with your support, <laughs> Chopra? I think so, just grab him, you know. 
That's put him true. in stasis for a while. Back in the Pokeball they go. <laughs> well, they've been using it quite wisely. And there's the Static Shiv for Arrow on this bag. Another Long Sword on top of that with some damage. That's a nice buy. He's still not going to have anywhere near the wave clear that IN has, but maybe that can keep a few ticks of damage off of the tower. We're waiting around now for that shiv of his own. Yep, Roar has the shiv and the Infinity's Edge. So he's going to hit pretty hard going forward. Still no armor on somebody just yet. Had to, wanted to finish that Righteous Glory on top of the Spectre's Cowl. So there is a slight window here for Roar to do damage, but at the same time, again, Longshu doesn't really have a reliable front line. Uh, we do see Tucson starting to build towards that Frozen Heart right now, but it's not going to matter if the fight happens in the next two minutes as the Dragon spawns in a minute 15. Another tower goes down against Longshu in the top lane. And now with the recent kills, KT has that gold advantage, and they're just going to start to push it in, not give Longju a chance to regroup and push down Ooh, towers. Roar is also pushing a lane without a tier two in it currently, so that's not going to be that effective. We really need him to start looking, and they see him in the bottom side. They're just going to try and do the Baron. This is smart. They, they have Cassiope and Callista. Oh, oh man, this is going to go down very quickly. Already down to half health. Longju is trying to come in. Now they have the Equalizer too. Equalizer onto the Baron too. This could potentially hit the steal. Goes for the Explosive Cast, but Score is going to secure that one. Frozen trying to do damage into the pit from afar. But KT happy with what they got. The Equalizer is already out. So is the Explosive Cast. They should all be able to get out just fine. No extra damage coming in from Longju. A very unfortunate misstep from Longju. There's no reason to have that Tristan in the bottom side. You have two other lanes that have tier two towers up in them, and you let Callista push all the way to your tier two. KT can just run to the safety of their tier one, the last remaining one in the top side. And that was a pretty silly mistake from IM, especially against a composition that has Cassiopeia and Callista, the, they can yeah. do the Baron so fast. Yeah, and look at this score. Using his ultimate to get into the Dragon Pit, get some vision. And, and this is the right play from IM, but it's too late. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I mean, they're taking it so fast. They could have done this earlier. But now they're going to give up a Baron and a Dragon for that one. Score. He's going to secure that on his own. Tunnels in with the deep wards. He knows it's safe going for that red steal. And that should matter a lot, too. Roar without that red buff isn't going to be able to stay in the fight nearly as comfortably as he might want to. Baron buff now for the minions in the bottom lane for KT. So they're just going to keep Apple at bay. And if Apple gets too close, KT could just go for the dive. They're going to take the tower down first, so Apple needs to watch out. Frozen is going to keep Fixer at bay, but the tier 2 is now gone for Longju. Yeah, keep on pushing forward, and that is a large gold lead developing for KT Rollster. As they get the vision down that they need, they start taking away the buffs and devouring the enemy jungle. Get a dragon as well. First of the game, so they can stall it out just a little bit compared to Incredible Miracle. And now this game looking a lot better for KT. The issue with IM's composition, though, is that if they do get a kill in the late game, they can end insanely quickly. Yes. This is this comp punishes your making a mistake super hard. Yeah, and I mean, Tristana is one of the most original hyper carries in the late game. So now that you missed out on all of the early advantage, you just have to hold off, try to get a really insanely good fight in the late game with the Gragas and Azir disrupting the fight and Roar getting the resets, take down two or three people on KT, punish them by now retaking all those structures you couldn't take earlier when you know you really wanted that advantage. So Longshu definitely not out of it, but KT, they can try to lock it in by continuing your pressure with this Baron buff and having the advantage they have right now. You have to punish the Tristana in return in the mid game before you get punished in the late game. Yeah, wave clear still really good for IM. And even with this Baron that is now off, actually, they were able to clear the minion wave really efficiently. They're, they have to deal with a large 
group of minions in the bottom side, but Apple has oh. his TP in case it's needed. All right, there we go. Gore using his range to get rid of that ward. Uh, Frozen's going to get caught under his tower there. He already used Emperor's Divide. It's seemingly onto Nagane, but it didn't hit. Frozen hasn't really been on top. He had a really good solo kill for the first blood. And then since then, Nagane's just been playing right around him, dancing around. And Tucson's going to get caught as he sits there. And he can't really protect it on his own. So we have Apple and Ignar showing up. Eye of the Storm to help shield it as Roar is able to handle the main wave pushing in after that tier two at top. But another tier two seemingly going down here in the mid lane. Fixer getting caught and Tucson just going forward. Do they want to go for a kill? I think it's a little too greedy as Arrow shows up. And Explosive Cask used to make sure that KT backs off. They'll happily do so after taking all the tier two yeah. towers against Longju. That was a very efficient Baron for KT. Even against all that wave clear, they find ways to dive the towers at the appropriate time to get kills and make the picks so that they can continue to take objectives on the map. Now they have a chance to go back and buy, spend all of that money. Yeah. Well, you came this far anyway, Longju IM, so why don't you just go ahead and have your own three inhibitor down come back <laughs> at 56 <laughs> minutes. Give it to me. <laughs> that Last would day be of one of the <laughs> wildest best of series I have It'd ever seen. It would be really crazy. <laughs> it would go down in history for sure in the of Legends Esports. And it's going to be tougher than it was uh, in the previous game since KT has a very distinct idea of how to play and team coordination actually playing a huge role there, making it in some ways a lot easier for them to close out. Look at that dicey situation with the Dragon and Baron coming up at the same time. Uh, but Callista can solo the dragon, so that is quite helpful in scenarios like these where the rest of your team can just stay in the mid lane so the enemy can't do the Baron Yeah. while you take the dragon. All right. Apple and Tucson is going to back off. Look at all these wars coming in from Longju. So, I mean, they've definitely improved as a team. They have an idea of how to play this out and where to regain the vision when with both of these objectives coming up. I think this is a really cool comp for my own. I hope we see something more like this that I like fast push. I find it very interesting as a strategy. And this is one of the best compositions for fast pushing in the game because you have Gragas to knock people off the turrets, Azir with his sand soldiers that can chunk them out as well as provide you flank protection in your rear, and Tristana. Uh, yeah. You have that Janna too for the extra yep. damage and the move speed to disengage. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's a great comp. And we saw some of the power of it early. Unfortunately, they made some mistakes. Uh oh, yeah. Tucson gets caught though as he tries to get into this vision war around their blue buff. Baron spawning in 30 seconds. That's why. Ignar comes in though. He's ranged. So he'll go in and take care of that pink. Meanwhile, Nagne stealing that red. Guess it feels are all about stealing those reds. <laughs> Today, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so KT just says, all right, well, you know what? We still have some regular sight wards in there. And we still have the territory advantage in terms of setting up and forcing you to check on this Baron. So they're happy to just sit back in river. Well, hello there, Tucson. Arrow walking forward. And Fixer is there. I mean, the long shoe cannot leave at this uh -oh. point. Oh, they catch Someday, though. Someday taking a lot of damage. He's trying to go onto Ignar. Oh, Ignar flashes over and brings Someday all the way out. He needs to flash back out. A nice equalizer on the side, but Nagne gets the kill onto Tucson. That was a very defensive equalizer, and it didn't really hit anybody. Now they're going to have an even harder time actually contesting this Baron. Yeah, you don't have the smite nor the explosive cast. Someday does have teleport, he's just gonna, he just gonna teleport back in. And I think Longshu at this point, you launch a jungler, he's gonna have to say, all right, let's try this again. Let's try to just block off. Just run for Dragon, honestly. Yeah, go for the, oh, I think they're too late at this point though. So Apple just going down to the bottom lane. Yeah, Fixer already in mid, they see that. They say, all right, well, we're back to this. Just gotta defend. Someday following time. over the wall with the twisted advance, but Still at his flash up, so he escapes. And in the meantime, the rest of KT managed to find Tucson on the bottom side. And the equalizer wasn't enough to prevent his death. And that'll be a dragon and a baron for KT Rolster. 8K the gold lead here at 33 minutes. And now they should be looking to close.
Yeah, fro um, not frozen, but Longju overall seeming to lack a little bit of that communication after getting defeated in the second game. They're overlapping a lot of their ultimates for defensive value when they don't need to. Earlier we saw that Equalizer and the Emperor's Divide, Explosive Cask and Emperor's Divide being doubled up, and it'd help a lot if they could save one or two of those to extend the fight. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, Tucson needs to watch out. He's been getting caught quite a bit as they go into desperation zone in game three. He will get out this time, though. And you can't really blame him because he's fighting for the vision that Longshu desperately wants, but he's doing it alone. So it's a little risky. Frozen trying to buy some time with his passive at the tier two. As turtling as best he can. But there's a 1-3-1 one, one split push coming in with the Rek'Sai, still with Void Rush available. Uh, not really a lot of good tunnels to tunnel to, though. That's that's This is a bit dangerous for score. Yeah, and that just gets melted right away by the Callista and the Baron buff minions. Tucson alone for now. This inhibitor turret's going down really fast. There is the shield coming from Janna as Frozen shows up. I think Score is just trying to prey on the fact that they don't know that he doesn't have any tunnels to tunnel to. Yeah, well, because he absolutely cannot join this team fight if they all live in the mid lane. Yeah, there's nowhere. There's literally nowhere to go except home for Score. So, someday, all alone, shoving up that top tower. And he's doing it pretty fast for a tree. But that mid lane is in a lot of danger. And look at this, because there's so much pressure mid, Nogni shows up in bottom. Along with score, look at the task fee coming in from that Rek'Sai. Just chunking down that Inimitor Tower. It's very low. Roar just being puppeteered by KAT going from lane to lane just to defend. Roar desperately trying to clear out this minion wave before it reaches. Of course, the cannon minion is still going to do damage with that Baron buff, and he can't inch forward to get rid of that right now. So now Apple in the top lane. But for how much longer, who knows, as Score finally finishes the Inhibitor Tower and bottom, Longshu has successfully defended the mid lane where they invested the most people, but now it is a bear inhibitor in the bottom lane. Baron buff still there, but not for long. It should go out just about as this wave pushes up. Yeah, there we go. It is over. But KT doesn't mind. They have all their abilities to fight if they need, but the wave clear from Longshu still cannot be ignored. Yeah, although the Luden's Echo really helping out with that from Nogne. Yeah. Managing those minion waves. Someday taking a long detour around to the open inhibitor. See if they can get it. Fixer opens up with a nice chunk. Apple with a good intercept to get some damage onto Someday before he can actually reach his destination. All right, and so they successfully push KT back after giving up one inhibitor tower uh, in that push. Because he got the tier twos earlier with the Baron buff. Still, for a Baron buff, they didn't get a whole lot. That was pretty good defense from Incredible Miracle. Yeah, I mean, they moved very swiftly and decisively. No one was kind of caught bouncing back and forth aimlessly between two lanes. So Long Shu having the communication back up for that segment of the game. And We'll see how things go. Arrow stealing the red buff. The Roar just has not been able to get his hands on that red buff. Hurts a little bit. Aha, banner of command onto the Maokai. Oh, man. So they're really just trying to split push this game. That is, that's how it's going to roll. No Baron for a long time. Yeah. About it's three minutes, actually. So they've, they've got some time to work with right now. And they were so close to cracking the base on multiple fronts, but they only got that one inhibitor for their troubles, thanks to some quick swapping by IM. Yeah, what well, that banner of man, what really matters is also that Roar has to be on duty in that lane, so someday can kind of determine where Roar goes, and they can split accordingly to get rid of that empowered minion. We'll see KT setting up. I mean, still a minute left for Dragon, and then a minute after that, approximately, for the Baron. Pharaoh's doing nothing to someday as he's super tanky now. And there we go. Frozen's passive is back up, so just using it passively, as the name would indicate, just to defend a little bit earlier. But Score just running rampant, as was Arrow in the enemy jungle, taking away all their buffs. Well, they see Score at the top side. 
And they, they're going to know, well, there is a tunnel right behind him this time. So Score finally has a good target for his ultimate. Yeah, he can come in behind his own teammates. But of course, if you get a good explosive cast at that time, you can definitely try to burst someone down. Roar has that last whisper. Has a QSS too for defensive measures. Meanwhile, Void Staff on Frozen, and he doesn't have his Ludens yet. That is allowing KT a little bit of a window to shove in where Nagne has that Ludens himself. Roar is going to clear out the rest of the minions and the inhibitor once again open. And look at this in top lane. Score gets caught, takes a little bit of damage from Apple. That tower is so close to falling, though. Yeah. They're taking a lot of damage just over time. And here we go, Dragon up now. Baron up in 30 seconds. Longju, they really want to deny these objectives. But how advisable is that? And also KT, they don't need the objective. They can just get kills while baiting them out into the pits. Now Apple, teleport up. But yeah, look, you don't even need to bait. You can just two-man that Dragon. Uh, Longju responding by going very deep into enemy territory. Just trying to... Yeah, they don't have a Zir passive either, which makes yeah, this a lot Yeah, but there's easier. an Explosive Cask on to score. A lot of damage. Whoa, Roar jumps way far forward. Has to use the QSS, but there's the Flash Pulverize. Roar taking a lot of damage. He's at half health now, and he comes in from behind. And even with the exhaust, he gets the kill with someday. There's the Equalizer used defensively once again. Apple at full health, but he's a little too late as Frozen almost gets locked down. It had to happen. The Tristana had to jump forward, gets caught. Roar, quite disappointed in that play. I mean, at the same time, Tucson kind of just calling the shots and starting that fight before getting exact information on where the rest of KT was. Well, it's just so risky to push up like that when you don't have a zero passive available to cover your butt. Yeah, well, Long Shu, everyone was pretty desperate and panicked at that point to just get what advantage they could. Score ended up baiting them into a bigger fight than they wanted, and Roar just gets chunked out. Had to use the summoners for a quick escape, only to be flanked, even after the exhaust, by a knockdown on Cassiopeia. And guess what? Now it's time for Minion with Banner of Command push with the Baron buff. Ah, uh, yes. From Someday, and that is not going to be a siege that, even with their great wave clear, IM will be able to cope with. And that should probably signal an inhibitor as we move towards the end of this game. Large gold lead for KT. They've just been unable and, to a certain degree, unwilling to dive the base and take that risk when they can just continue to get the Barons. And now they have an ultra safe way of closing out this game. All right, yeah, this time they should. First of all, I mean, that bottom one is open. It is pushed out pretty far, so they'll have to spend some time. That's good news for Longju. Uh, Tucson, a little bit forward just to get some vision for his team. But KT's also been so good at denying vision, too, whenever they start to push in again. Look at this, just gets cleared immediately. Not using the banner yet. Yeah, interestingly enough, they might just be wanting to use it here to secure this inhibitor. There it is. Okay. Yeah, has been used right here. You really don't need it, because the minion wave's going to walk too far forward for this inhibitor, for that bannered minion to be really <laughs> oh, useful. Man. Here comes the cannon minion. It's, not, it's not really good against inhibitors, though. It's good against inhibitor turrets. Very true. Mr. Uh, Sana may be able to hit it right here. Oh, and look at this. Uh, there's, there's a smite massive. from Frozen. So yeah, that banner of command just doing damage to that was not a, good use of banner. a tower that technically doesn't exist. Someday, not using the Banner of Command as efficiently as he could have, and he's already taken some poke. Now, Roar's positioning is so important. He does still have that QSS up once again. Doesn't have his summoner, so and look at this. Tucson actually just body size forward, and he doesn't get a perfect explosive cast, but Roar is at bullet. A nice equalizer, and Emperor's Divide for Someday to stay on that a little bit longer. Vixer is up front with Unbreakable Will. Ingar eventually goes down as we see the Petrifying Gaze come in. And Roar gets eliminated as he just desperately goes in for some random resets but can't get the kills. And KT Roaster will secure game three for a 2 1 win against Long Zhuaya. And that's right. KT just really capitalizing off of the positional mistakes to get that first Baron on the map. And they're able to snowball it into a win. However, I am looking a lot better tonight than we've seen him so far this season for sure. Same could be said of Samsung. Yeah. And a, a very nail-biting win for KT Rolster, especially 
after that wild wow. second game where they were behind three inhibitors with zero Nexus turrets and managed to pull it back. Yeah, and you got to imagine, I mean, that definitely had a bit of a mental hit on Longshu. You saw just how devastated they looked, of course, but, you know, it didn't seem like they let that get to them too much. They 